Chaotic Sully here, and this is going to be a tutorial on how to set up a Mineshafter Squared Minecraft server uh, using both Bucket and Vanilla. Since there are only minor differences, I can give you the general explanation with the specifics when we get there. This is going to be for Windows only, so Windows 7 and Windows Vista. This will work fine for. If you know what you're doing, you can modify this to work for Windows XP. It's the same exact programs, you're just going to be slightly different steps involved. And when Windows 8 comes out, this tutorial should still work. If there are some minor differences, I will make a new tutorial later this year. So to get started, we're going to want to create a folder uh, for the server. So we're just going to call this Minecraft Server. And you can put this anywhere on your computer. I'm just putting it on the desktop for the purpose of this tutorial. First thing we're going to need is the proxy. So you're going to go to mineshaperscore.com, go to the downloads page, and you're going to need uh, server and source downloads, the very first one right here. As of this recording, I'm on version 3.5. I'm not sure next time I'm updating, but if that's a different number, don't worry about it. Uh, but it's this very first one right here that you want under server and source downloads. So we're going to download that, keep Alright, let's pull that over. Seems like I already have a few copies in my downloads folder, so let's just rename that. Okay, now you're going to need one other file for for uh, bucket vanilla. Wow, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna edit that out. That was a really bad. Oh wow. <sighs> okay, so for bucket, you need to get the bucket jar for vanilla server you need to get the vanilla uh, jar. I will show you where both of those are now. So either go to dl.bucket.org to get the latest uh, craft bucket jar, which is what I will use for this tutorial. Uh, while it's downloading, you can go to minecraft.net. Go to download right over here. And down here, multiplayer server, you're going to want to click on that right there, Minecraft server jar. So you get one of the two. I'm just going to use bucket for now. And again, I must have multiple copies in my downloads folder. Rename that. So now you should have, that's all you need the web browser for. So now all you should have is in a folder somewhere on your computer, the proxy and the server. Now, to get this started, um, Let's, let's open up Notepad. This is the best way to start the server. Uh, I found if you want to use command line, then you can use these same exact commands. I'm just going to be saving them in Notepad for now. But what you want to do is you want to save the file as a um, go to all files. Don't have text selected, otherwise it will save it as a text file. You want to make sure you have all files selected and sa save it as whatever you want, I'm just going to call this start server dot bat. Make, again, if you have that there, it's going to um, append, it's going to look like this, dot bat dot txt. And you don't want that. You just want dot bat. So go back to all files. Save. And it should create there. Uh, if you can see the gears there, let's go to medium icons. That icon there. If you have that, then you did it right. And you're all set. Now, in this folder, file, wow, I'm not doing that great today. Either way, in this file, we're going to uh, store the command that starts the server. So, the command is java, because you need to invoke java. Now, I'm going to show you a few commands that help manage the java virtual environment. These aren't necessary, but I suggest to do at least the two I'm going to show you. They tend to keep things under control. So, dash capital X, lowercase m, s, then 512, capital M. Dash, capital X, lowercase m, x, 1024, m. So just to explain these two real fast, what this one is, is the minimum heap size for Java. And this is the maximum heap size. What that really means is the amount of RAM that Java will allocate for the server. 
So, for example, I'm going to pull up my performance here. I have about 6 gigs of RAM in this computer. I'm using 2.4 right now, about. Now, I'm limit this this means I'm giving it a minimum of half a gig. So Java will just take half a gig and set it aside for the server. I'm letting it go up to 1 gig of RAM. So depending on how much free RAM you have on your computer to use, you can give it as little or as much as you want. This is fine for your average 20 person server. Um, depending on how active and if ev all 20 people are on at once, things can get a little slow. If you notice that it's a little laggy, try increasing the maximum or increasing the minimum so it automatically allocates more memory for you. By changing that, if it doesn't solve the lag problem, then this was not your problem. This is only one small thing that could cause lag amongst the many um, other problems. So just something to be aware of. Moving on. So dash jar. Uh, is if you notice, the um, these are jar files, so we need to invoke the jar command to run them. So what we need to do is first invoke the proxy, because my proxy will then launch the server so it can control the variables it needs to for the proxy to work. So we're going to launch the proxy first, so just mine. Chef. All right. To avoid misspellings, like I've had when trying to record this previously, let's just copy and paste. Now, as a second parameter, I'm passing in craft bucket. That is a parameter to the proxy program. It allows you to give it. So you can name that file anything you want, as long as you let the proxy know what it's called. If you're using a vanilla server with the normal vanilla name minecraft underscore server dot jar, you don't need to declare anything. You can you can just leave it off as that, and the proxy will be able to find it as is. But if you're using bucket, you need to specify the name of the bucket server file. And that's it. Uh, for, well, actually, one other thing. If you want to use command line with vanilla. This is only for the vanilla server. If you want to use command line with vanilla uh, versus the GUI interface for vanilla once it launches, you're going to need to type no GUI, if I can actually type it. There we go. No GUI at the very end um, after you specify the vanilla uh, jar. But we don't worry about that because bucket only is command line only. So we save that. We close that. So now we're just going to start the server. And as you can see, it's booting up. You're gonna, it's going to generate all the servers. It's going to generate the map. It's going to do a bunch of wonderful things. Now, while it's generating, I want to show you this properties file here. Just so you, this is something you just want to pay attention to. This file here. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Max players is how you can set how many players can connect to the server at once. That doesn't mean that the computer you're running on will be able to handle whatever you set. Because if I really wanted to, I could set this to like 2,000 players. It wouldn't be able to handle it, but I could tell it to try. Um, which I might do randomly on my on the official server just to see one day, but that's a different story. You know, difficulty, PvP, online mode, make sure this is set to true. If that's set to false, then via a little trick, which I'm not going to show you here, anyone can sign into your server as any name. That's the point of Mineshafter Squared, is it replaces the authentication so you can have a non-premium server that has proper authentication. So people can't wreak havoc under false names. Now, this next part is only if you want to get on the server list. Change, oh uh, crap, where to go? It doesn't seem to be here. So, there's an extra command we're going to have to add to the end of this configuration. It's called enable-query equals true. All that does, 
Oh, I can't save it. You know what? I guarantee you don't save. It's probably there. Edit. Yeah, enable query. There it is. It just wasn't finished being edited. So we want to see if that's true. And I can't do that until the server is done. So, okay. Now that it's generated, we just stop the server. And we can... Now yeah, go away. Set that to true and save the file. So now what that does is enables the website to hit the server and let it know if it's up or down. I can, using enable query, get other information about the server, like what players are on the server, how many players are on, what plugins you have installed, other things like that. Currently, I do not save any of that data. I just hit the server and get a response that lets me know that the server's up. That's all I do. I will be very clear on the website. If I start saving data from, from that query, I will be very, very transparent about that. I believe in transparency and think that giving you more information about what information I have can never hurt. So that's pretty much it to get on the server list. If after enabling server query, uh, enable query to true, and you still can't get on the server list, uh, ju and just to show you actually real fast where you can go on the website to do this. So you're going to sign in. That's not, that's not that. Okay, so we can sign in, and under manage server, you can hit recheck. Recheck will force it to query the server. If this is offline and it should be online, or if it says not verified, just click recheck. If your status is set to online, everything worked. If it's still the same status that it was before, then we got to look into some problems here. A few notes. If you're running Hamachi, if you're trying to run your server on Hamachi, this will not work, period, and you will not be able to get onto the server list. The way the server list works is not compatible with Hamachi and never will be. Hamachi is really not something you need to run your server. It solves one very small problem that can be solved uh, by going to Google. So, really, if you're trying to run an Hamachi server, if that's proper grammar, don't. Try to do it without Hamachi. It will actually save you quite a bit of trouble. Now, there's two things you need to do if you're not going to use Hamachi, which would be required to get onto the server list. Those two things is to know your external IP address, and make sure you have the ports forward, forwarded properly. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but that's what you need to do. Make sure, uh, actually I can show you your external IP. Your external IP, if you go to Google, and just ask it, what is my IP? What is my IP? It'll tell you right there. That's, your, that's my external IP address. Um, your 192.168 address is not your external. That's not the address. That will never work <laughs> with the server list. But that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If this tutorial was not straightforward or thorough enough, please let me know, and I will re-record it and do a better job. This was kind of done on a whim and quickly for someone who needed it, but... If it's not as clear as it should be, let me know. And I will totally be able to re-record this um, and do a much better tutorial. This was kind of a put together, this is put together very quickly. So thank you for watching, and please give me feedback, either way. I don't care whether it's emailing me, leaving a comment on YouTube, or going in the forums. The forums are right under help, forums, right there. Either way, let me know what you think of the service, what you think of these tutorials, if they're good or bad, and just in general, what you think about Mindchafter Squared. I'm always, always wanting to hear back from you. And find us on Facebook. We do have a group on Facebook by the same name. So, yeah. Thank you for watching.